artist friends, welcome to this little bonus video that goes along with my Compassion Hop video. If you haven't seen the Compassion Hop video, that link will be below and also above in the iCard. Because of time and kind of the repetition of this watercoloring, I cut a lot of it from the video. But here it is in its entirety. It's sped up about four times because again, it's kind of slow and repetitive. But if you want to see the entire watercoloring process, here it is for you. I'm using the Core Watercolors. It's spelled Q-O-R. They're by Golden, one of my favorite acrylic paint companies. I'll have the links to the watercolors, the pan, the brush, the paper, and everything I use below. These watercolors come in tubes and I panned them myself. And I actually have a video of doing that, I will link that below and above in the iCard as well. So if you haven't watched the um, mixed media video where I use these daffodils as my focal point centerpiece subject, so to speak, um, I preface this watercolor by saying I am not a professional watercolor watercolorer. <laughs> I actually really enjoy watercoloring and I have um, been commissioned to paint some watercolor home portraits, but I'm not like a perfect floral watercolorist. These aren't going to be um, true to life, realistic. They're kind of more in my, um, I would say alternative grungy kind of mixed media, sti media style. So since I talked through most of the beginning of creating these watercolors, I'll kind of explain a little bit more here as we go along. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot. There's not a whole lot to say. Like I said, I don't have specific like technique to share with you. I can just tell you what I did. So in order to paint these daffodils, this was my first time actually painting daffodils. I did some image searching to kind of see how different people watercolor them and kind of use those as my inspiration, but there's not one specific artist I can say that I, you know, used a tutorial from or used an image from. I looked at a whole bunch of images and then just applied what I saw to my own style. So the first step I did was create that center part of the daffodil. You can see I'm creating them here. They kind of look like duck feet or bird feet. They're that center part, the little trumpet on the inside of the daffodil. And I created those first. Um, they're kind of like a pizza shape or a triangle shape. I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing, but this is what felt right for me. Once my little center cone kind of dried a little bit, then I used my brush to um, create the petals and I really just let my brush do the work. There's nothing fancy here except some brush strokes. I'm using all sorts of shades of yellows and oranges and some kind of like yellow ochres and deeper like brown oranges to create the different tones and the contrast in these daffodils. And while that watercolor is still semi-wet, I'm just adding little bits and dots here and there to create some contrast and shadowing and definition in my daffodil shapes. Thank you. 
and adding the stems and the leaves is a super simple process. I didn't want to be overly detailed. Again, really sketchy, really kind of whimsical and kind of in my messy mixed media style. So for my original project, I really was only going to do like the side facing daffodils because I wasn't brave enough to attempt some front facing ones and then I thought well that's silly I might as well try it and see if it works out because the front facing daffodils are just so iconic and beautiful. So now I'm attempting my first little try at some front facing daffodils and I'm also um, creating some other side facing ones there too as I wait for the centers to dry. Again here, I just pulled up some Google images and I'm trying to kind of copy a few of them as my like inspiration, but there's again not one that I particularly essentially copied. I just use them as my guide to kind of remind myself how the shadow and light um, play on the centers of the daffodils and then also to remind myself what the petals look like. But other than that, I kind of again did this in my own style with a few different pictures for reference. Now I'm just adding the petals to my center. For those centers, I kind of kept the outside dark. Remember, they like pop out. So I wanted it to kind of look a little 3D. Hopefully I achieved that. I'm adding my petals and just like the side facing daffodils, I'm just plopping down color to create dimension, shape, shadow, interest. Like I said, and I'm gonna repeat over and over, I am not a professional. Do not critique how I watercolor. This is just for fun and you know I enjoy doing it and I wanted to show you my simple process to show you that you too can be a watercolorer watercolorer watercolorist however you say that I added that tiny bit of green in the center earlier one of the reference photos I looked at had that and I thought that was kind of really cool and just wanted to also add that for that dimension and to look you know, help with that like trumpet shape or that center cone shape of the daffodil.
um, plopping a little bit more yellow in that center and then I'm going to add a dark dark around um, the edge of that cone shape again to try to make it look like it's got some dimension. Adding a little bit more plops of color here and then I'm going to add the stems and the leaves and unfortunately I did not get that on camera for some reason I forgot to repress record down or something but it's no different than the ones I added before on the side facing daffodils. And that's it. There are my very brave front facing daffodils. Now, if you want to see how I use these daffodils, make sure you check out my daffodil journal page. It's part of a YouTube hop called the Compassion Art Hop. And I'll have all those links below for you to see and enjoy so many other incredible artists work. Thanks so much for watching.